But I just wanted to let you know that what I did is after you know looking around and finding the right plants, I went ahead and did a plan. Nice. Uh, drew out a chalk on some concrete and laid all the <laughs> plants out so that you know we would know if it fit. So and it does. And so it fits. Now we are ready to plant. This out. Oh yeah. Mm, the roots aren't too bad. There's just separation. Bad. Hi, right, Joellen, what do you think? It looks good. beautiful. Mm -hmm. But now we've got to mulch. Yes, got to do that, right? We want to, uh, the mulch will help hold the moisture in the soil for all these plants. Okay. And we're going to do that before we plant those itty bitty tiny vinca in the front. Okay. And a trick that I use when we're trying to go around small plants, you have this big bag of mulch, is. Uh -huh. You take a container and you fill it with the mulch and so that you can easily it. just set it around the plants. Because you don't want we don't want this thick. We okay. just want to cover the ground. Oh, yeah, I like that trick. So what do you think so far? That looks all good. Nice and mulched. Uh -huh. And very, now, very now it's time to add the little bit of flowers that we have left that okay. are so small. And we'll just fill in where we see some blank spaces. We've got six. Uh, well, there's three. three of them. Three. See, there's a hole right there. Okay. You just sit Maybe it there. That would I will be good. It. Okay. It's like we've got a hole here. One here. Yep. And there we go. Next, we've got to provide some sand in shallow dish that we can keep wet all the time because they'll they'll be able to land on it. It'll be solid, but it'll be wet enough that they can get a drink from. Okay. And we're going to set up our rocks around it so they'll have some place to sunbathe on. Okay. All right, Joellen. So we got everything our pollinators need, right? That's right. We got flowers. We've got. Uh, uh, some feeder plants for some of the caterpillars. Mm -hmm. We've got a place for them to get a drink and a place for them to rest and sunbathe, sunbathe. sunbathe their wings. <laughs> yes. Looks inviting. It does. I feel like going down there and just sunbathing, right? Yes, warm enough. <laughs> well, look, Joella, we definitely appreciate that. Can't wait to see what this looks like throughout the growing season. It's, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be beautiful. Thank, Thank you much. You. We're going to remove this limb off of this magnolia. It's dying. We have dead tissue out here. And to make a proper pruning cut, you want to leave between a quarter to a half inch collar. And I don't want to strip any bark off the bottom, so I'm going to cut in about a quarter of an inch on the bottom of this limb. And then I'm going to come on top and about a half, a quarter to a half inch, I'm going to make the cut. And there we are. You can see the bottom cut here, where I made the bottom cut, I almost didn't go enough. You see how this is hanging, this tissue is hanging here, and I have a little tissue hanging here. If I had not made the bottom cut, when I cut this, this bark would have peeled all the way down. And that would have created a source of uh, entry for bad organisms. But as it is now, we've got kind of a straight cut here, and uh, we've got a half to a quarter inch collar where it can heal. If you cut too close to the trunk of a tree, when it heals, it'll, it'll create almost a hole inside the trunk of the tree. This, when it heals completely, should be pretty smooth and it should be on the outer portion of the trunk of this tree. All right, so here's our Q&A segment. You ready? These You're are ready. good questions. Let's do it. All right, here's our first viewer email. Why is my bleeding heart plant turning yellow? And this is Laura, Memphis. And this is something that happened in July. July, July. yes. So what do you think about that? It well, you know, yellow. July was very wet. Mm -hmm. And turning yellow can be a lot of things. Sometimes it's not enough water. Sometimes it's too much water. Okay. So if it was July, maybe it was getting too much water, being that bleeding hearts are usually in a shady area. So it might be getting too much water at that time. Uh, and why it's turning yellow. But it, in lack of nutrients, it could be lack Possibly. of nutrients too. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you might want to check with a soil test.